Welcome to Corrective Consciousness episode 195, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I am your host, Vise the Bold, and this is Lotus Prince and Thack of Fun. Oh man, and we have another beautiful show here for you. I said beautiful last time, but I mean it this time. I did not mean it last time. <laughs> wow, so okay. now now I just don't know whether to trust you and take you at your word. Uh, you should always take me at my word, except for last time. I mean, this is this is putting me on kind of shaky ground, because this is audio only. All we have is your words. Huh. So, Night Dive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Night Dive. Uh, so, um, we wanted to do another uh, a show on Night Dive Studios, because Night, Night, Night Dive is really interesting, and they've been doing really, really good work for the retro gaming community, especially when it comes to um, PC games. So, I, I, I wanted to go over a smattering of the games that they are... Um, uh, really well known for and uh what what they'll be uh, putting out in the future but they, they the way, really I, I, I should point out service. i should point out unless there's some exception i'm unaware of i think it's exclusively been pc games um, well no they 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 have um ported a few n64 exclusive games to pc and the, the only console. one i can think of was doom 64 which was turok that, that was on pc the only one I can think of is um, Doom 64, which is, um, that was, like, brought to PC by, like, a fan community, I think. So, like, it was kind of on PC. I don't know if they worked directly from 64 or from the pre-established thing, though. But Turok had PC versions as well. Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think it had a, initially a PC version. Uh, it did not have a PC version until recently. I thought it had it on um, GOG for a while. I'll look oh, this wait, up. wait, 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 wait. Um, it was published by Acclaim on the N64 and Microsoft Windows. Okay. Yeah, April 2008, um, yeah. Okay. Well, the, they, um... Cause... I'll, I'll, I'll go through a history of, of things that they put out, because they, they're really interesting. <laughs> so, um, Night Dive is headed by, um, Stephen Kick. Yes. And, uh, they are a really badass company. They really have thought, uh, thought through... A whole bunch of uh, like legal um, like like not um, like yeah, hurdles. For lack of a better word <laughs> hurdles in order to get a lot of stuff done. So um, probably their earliest thing was um, re-releasing uh, System Shock Two on modern consoles, which and was what a num- way to come out of the gate, by the yeah. way. Yeah, System Shock Two was like the number one requested game for uh, for GOG for a really yeah. long time. And uh, for good reason, it's a it's a great and influential game. It is one of the like coolest uh, older PC games, and it was completely inaccessible. It was hard hard to play on modern consoles, and yeah, uh, or systems. And, yeah, mo- modern systems, uh, and it was very difficult to find. Um, yeah, I'm, just I'm watching getting a like copy a, of it. I'm I'm reading the list of the re- the releases they made, and some of them are pretty amazing. Yeah, and a oh, bunch huge, of them are like, are like pretty obscure as well. Yeah, like Spy Fox? So, I haven't heard of that for like years. Yeah, yeah. They put this one out in, in 2013. That was like the earliest. But they, they, they re-released Wizardry 6, 7, and 8. Wizardry is like one of the like, like crazy um, foundational um, uh, PC uh, RPG series. Uh, those haven't hadn't been around since 1990. Uh, like Wizardry six and seven were 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 released in 1990 and didn't get a re-release until um, 2013. I have no mouth and I must scream is uh, yeah. also a fantastic uh, uh, point and click game that had been inaccessible. Uh, Lotus has played that one quite a bit, right? I, I let's played it a long time ago. I actually have that on PC, but it's on Steam and GOG now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shadow Man, which I, I didn't even realize this one. Uh, yeah, this that's one a put... that's a legit game. That like that's one of those things I'd always heard about, and I was like, I don't really know what this is, but it's like a a pretty solid like you... Proto Metrovania. Yeah, I was gonna like say like three D Metrovania. Metrovania. It, it's really good. Yeah. 
And it's one of the only, like, like it was, a, I let's played it as a Patreon request, and the person who recommended the game mentioned something that definitely seems to be true. Like, the, the game goes into voodoo lore. How many games do you know that do that? Because I can't yeah. think of any outside of Shadow Man. I remember when yeah, I was it's like, also one of, like... Oh, go ahead. I remember when I was a kid, we rented Shadow Man, and I hated it so much because it scared the shit out of me, so I didn't want to play. Do, uh, yeah, depending how far you get... Because the beginning of the game, you're like, this is weird. But when you get to, like, the main hub, for the lack of a better word, like, the engine, man, some stuff gets freaky in there. Yeah. And, I, and how old was I? I must have been, like, only, like, nine or, nine or ten years old. So oh, hell no. You're not ready for that out. game in nine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was based off of a comic. Uh, that was, yep. like, um, you know, part of the that... Uh, time in acclaim's life where they were like um you know doing valiant and image comics and things like that yeah yeah you uh, could actually unlock a couple of the comics uh covers if you get x number of dark souls maybe all of them nice moving on from that um uh they they released seventh guest and eleventh hour um which oh, are, are nice. part of the same series uh so um seventh guest was a huge foundational uh f m v uh puzzle game uh it, kind of in the same vein as like mist or something but like creepier um yeah, yeah. definitely definitely a game that a lot of people uh who had picked up like windows 95 pcs had gotten that that game along with like mist and and, and stuff yeah, like that so, like today uh, yeah, you might okay. find it kind of hokey but back then when this kind of thing was entirely new it was like ooh, eerie yeah i think they might be involved in the uh third game too which is being made on made i heard that was right a now, fan game like the 13th something or whatever yeah, but it's like it's. I think it's an official fan game. It's. it's I don't know. I, I, oh, I forget oh, the details. like a, a fan game because they can't help but be fan game. But maybe the original creator, like um, like like yeah. like Night Cry. It's a clock tower game. That's not a clock tower game. Yeah, I, I there's something something up to up with it like that. Something like that. Um, moving on from that, they they put out Harvester, which was like a big game that like a lot of people I like Lotus were never, waiting for. Yeah, that that's that's another game that I actually bought physically because at the time that was the only way you could do it like they're never gonna put harvester on steam like i they <laughs> did i couldn't believe it so yeah that that's a foundational like really pushing the boundary kind of game and yeah, the uh, message that, of that the was game, put out in 2014 yeah yeah the message of the game which it explicitly tells you at one point is that violent video games are not going to turn you into some crazy psycho killer like, the guy who gives you the message is, like, uh, the hero on one of those black-and-white cowboys and Indian shows, and he's, like, shooting Indians all the time, and he's like, well, whatever, you know, kids watch it, they're fine. And so it's just, it's interesting, like, the meta-commentary they have on it, because the game really is as fucked up as can be to make a point. Like, are you, the player, gonna just shoot somebody in the face after playing this game? Probably not, but no, the game's, yeah. like, but the game is also offensive to the point of being, like, actually offensive. <laughs> Yeah, and then they they released a whole suite of humongous under, uh, entertainment uh, games that were foundational for a lot of people of a certain age. Um, yeah, things these, like Gemma the... Sam and Spy Fox and all that. Oh, Night Dive did that? Yeah, Putt Putt. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they re-released all of these. And didn't yeah, they also Freddy do Fish. A... I was just going to mention, yep, Freddy Fish. Yep. Yeah, so these these games were foundational for kids who grew up in the um in the 90s and uh early 2000s. These were very big uh games for yeah. uh kids around that sort I of never age. played those, but I remember being aware of not Putt-Putt actually, but Pajama Sam. I remember his like the cover art looked kind of cool. It was like this little kid superhero kind of thing going on i'm kind but of in the I, I was, same yeah. boat yeah uh like i was aware of most of these games because my friends like either had them or their like their parents had them i think i had mm. a pajama sam i don't remember which one yeah i never had any of those uh, i grew up on the the super solvers games which i'm still waiting seeing... to be modernized by the way I'm, I remember seeing a lot of the humongous entertainment games ending up on like 3DO, and I, I thought I thought they wow. were like fascinating. Um, they're, it's just like it, I they were really well made, well animated, uh, like kids of entertainment. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. The, cartoon. the closest I came to playing any of those was 
the uh, the magic school bus like inside the human body. Like, oh, yeah. oh nice. body. That game was all. You know, it was kind of funny. That game was based off of the book of the same name, where they eventually get out of Arnold's body by I think they gave him like a pe- like a hot pepper or something, and he like pepper. sneezed them out or something. But there was an alternate way to escape. No, 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 no. I think, no, no. They gave him something that made him sneeze. But there was an alternate way to get out of him in the computer game. I think this was the hot pepper, actually, where uh, he sweats you out. Oh, okay, oh, wow. okay. They covered that too. That was kind of cool. Neat, neat. Um, moving on from that, they they were also instrumental in re-releasing the entire Tex Murphy series, which is also another foundational um, yeah. FMV series. I never uh, touched those either, uh, but they're I know they're classics. They're considered by by some people to be like the best of their kind. Uh, they're like really good FMV games. Like they're the acting's good. The um, mm. like the voice acting and the uh, the directing, even like the um, the dialogue is very clever. It's like the um, opposite really of stuff. the um, oh, what are those games like the Mad Dog McCree stuff and oh, Crime, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. what was it Crime Patrol? Like where it's intentionally corny and schlocky. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, and there were like a whole bunch of these. Like uh, Under the Killing Moon is the most famous one, yeah, but then there was um, Pandora Detective and Overseer and um, Martian Man- Memorandum. The, the original so one badass. was Mean Streets. The original one was Mean Streets, but I would not recommend playing that one. That one's very difficult to play. It's, um, it's pretty crazy. I've never played these games, but I I see the logo for them and I know I I, rec- I recognize that like uh, that little logo. It's crazy. I I mainly see them on GOG. Like, oh yeah, thanks Murphy. I I actually really recommend uh <laughs> like watching somebody play like a long play of them because yeah. they're very entertaining. They're really funny. Nice. Um I I uh, I played Under Killing Moon um like a couple years ago and I laughed out loud several times when I wow. played it. Like Okay. It, nice. Like, that it like it, it holds up the humor is just that good um i and they made a, n- a new one recently too um like only yeah. a few years ago um yeah so like like without without night dive like these games wouldn't be modernized and, and brought to, and made for modern systems like you could buy all of these on steam and gog because of that yeah yeah um this and is they also a brought... huge huge deal and they also brought over uh, D the game and adapted it for widescreen. And D is yeah. a, D's, D's another one of those games where like I didn't know it was on PC, but it was. <laughs> it's like this you could see the big box, which is insane. Like you thought the PS one version was rare, damn. But um, that's I don't know if I'd rec- that that is definitely one I recommend watching, not playing because it's not fun to play. Where, like <laughs> I want to click from this screen to the next, but they go into the animation of you like walking in the first person. Which is cool, you know. Oh, animation, and like I'm, I feel like I'm moving there, and not just clicking there like mist, but like, man, does it pad the length? Like, like, oh, whoops, I went the wrong way. Let me go back. Like, wait. Oh yeah. yeah there's so much waiting in that game. What other <laughs> Even game? Even with was... a guide, it was like, can you please go faster? What other game was this, really this... notorious for that? Uh, like the the game with Christopher Walken. Uh... Oh yeah. Uh, I, oh, I, I know, know what you're talking, talking about. Fucking believable. Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh, a slasher? Ripper. No. Ripper. 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 My God. Because, like, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, like this the... guy is unfucking believable. That's like, the great. screen transitions would get ridiculously long at some points, man. Yeah. Well, you know what it makes me think of is when uh, movies came out on DVD. Um, you know how when they first started putting movies on DVD you would have like a still image for the title screen and it's like play movie view credits you know like that's it yeah yeah but then they were like no 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 let's make them cool and they had all these animations when you go from one menu to the next but like after the first time it's just length and you're yeah like, all right can i can i go to the fucking menu please so they kind of like re-simplified things on dvd and blu-ray so maybe maybe the title screen's like moving maybe it's a, a mute clip or something but like and maybe there's a sound effect when you click a menu, but you don't have to sit through, like, a movie to go to the options menu. Yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah. Like, they, like, hit a middle ground. <laughs> so, like, yeah, D is, like, the long version. Like, Mist is the click and you're there. D was, like, no, nah, let's put some animation in there. And now games are, like, let's just let's just not do that anymore. <laughs> uh, another one that they released was Bad Mojo Redux. Um, yeah, that's pretty so, wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wild game based off of like Kafka. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's another game I I have physically because it's obscure. I better pick this up before it disappears, and now it's available digitally. <laughs> I didn't think that that yeah, game would like, make who it. Would, you know? Who would think that this would be? This is like the a, a cult game that you would never think would get re-released. Like that's that's the kind of games that they're. Yeah, it's it's funny because Night Dive opens with System Shock, like you said, the number one most requested game for the platform, and then fucking Harvester and Bad Mojo. <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah, they're they're doing God's work. I mean, um, yeah. but they 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 have put out some like really good classics, like the like a bunch of Sid Meier's games. They put out. Um, Pirates Gold Plus, which is like a, yeah. a fucking classic, a yeah. really good game. No, yeah, you, you know really what they gotta bring back is. Uh, have you ever heard of Total Distortion? No, I don't know that one. It's a weird, like '90s 3D graphics. You know, with, with like no textures and everything, but like it's this kind of like musical adventure. But the main thing, if you've ever heard of the game, if there's one thing you might know about the game, it's the game over screen. Because you know how there are some fun game over screens, like that one Sega Racing, like, game over, oh, yeah! You yeah! Know, like, but, like, <laughs> there is an entire game over song for Total Distortion. I think I played it for you once, like, years ago. It's... Oh, yeah, you, you did play it. Dead, it was, like, on a guitar dead, game. Dead. Uh, yeah, guitar. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, so yeah. great. It's amazing. Like You are dead. Yeah, you are dead. dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, look it up. It's easy to find. It's amazing. Oh, man, yeah. Um... They also put out like a whole bunch of micro pros, um, like point and click adventures, including Bloodnet. That's this like really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just crazy stuff. Ooh, Cyberpunk. Um, yeah, Rex Nebular and the Cosmic Gender Bender. Yeah, remember those? <laughs> did, did they also did, did they also release Blood? Was that them? Yeah, so that that that's a lot later. Um, so we're we're still in uh, 2014 here with all, <laughs> the, all the stuff that these guys are. Yeah, these guys they, are they, prolific. They, they, but yeah, like all these really cool stuff. Let me see what they did in 2015. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, they put out System Shock Classic. So thanks to them, the original System Shock is playable and with mouse control. Yeah, I was gonna say they released System Shock One mouse and look. System Shock Enhanced version. So nice, yeah, you can, nice. Like it's it's not fully streamlined because you can only go so far with it. But they made it so you can like do mouse stuff to move around but then go back to the regular still screen use the mouse to click on stuff interface but it's it's still way more playable oh geez here's another interesting one silent service anyone any of you ever oh, played yeah. that no that was on the nes it was uh, yeah. that was like a commodore 64 uh a port on the nes we actually released by konami of all things we actually huh. as kids we rented it once uh the one on the nes my god that was a mistake <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it is very crunchy um like simulation kind of game. oh it's terrible oh, geez it's just terrible it's it's pr probably one of the least favorite games of anybody uh, on the nes and it's one of those games where I, I collect konami games but i can't bring myself to buy it even though it's like two bucks <laughs> yeah uh, like i remember i used to have like i think like a mission impossible pc game also by konami it's just like that's a thing that existed once huh I have that, yeah, but that one's actually made by Konami. Like it wasn't like a port. Okay. Um, like like Konami had a whole bunch of ports, like a uh, Silent Service. They had a uh, Carmen San. Uh, Where in time is Carmen San Diego on the NES? Uh, what else did they have? Yeah, uh, that TV show. A Defender was all of right. the Crown. Uh, Defender of the Crown. Does that sound right? Yeah. That I uh, wouldn't know. I mean, I've heard like... the name, but I don't know if Konami or what. Yeah, yeah. They they released a bunch of stuff that wasn't Konami stuff um like uh skate or die was another one of those it was like they were doing electronic arts um okay uh ports gotcha, that's what okay. they were doing did they also do like california yeah. games uh california games was put out by epics and okay. i think there was a micro prose game or mindscape it was a mindscape on nes i believe okay. but uh they did skate or die or and ski or die for um for electronic arts That's as so well good. as uh um defender of the crown and uh i think carmen san diego where in time is carmen san diego yeah th i think that's all of them um but yeah those are like the uh, and they they released them on the ultra label you know like um along with like the ninja turtle stuff was on the ultra li label as well sure um 
Yeah, really interesting at the time. But uh, anyway, yeah, like you said, they put out D. Uh, both Turok games have uh, modernized, uh, like, epic PC ports. They're yeah, and really, Turok 2, really I'm good. not sure about Turok 1, but Turok 2 has, like, online functionality with its multiplayer, which oh. is amazing. Yeah, the, these, the, these, this is starting to get into the territory where the games are so much better than their original counterparts that you would never want to play them. Like, they're, <laughs> they're, the remaster is so good. Yeah. Um, like, like it's so much quicker. The the draw distance is way better. The, the frame rate is so good. It functions a lot better than they did back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just, like, one of those things. Um, they're, they're both... These are really fantastic. Um, let me see. Uh, and these are on systems as well, consoles. Uh, th- those those two are on consoles. Uh, yeah, Turok also see. made it to uh, Switch, I believe. Oh, yep. One, one yep. and two, yeah. And like I, I've and seen two. them at Best Buy. It's freaking weird seeing like limited run games at Best Buy. <laughs> Yeah, the limited run game has like um like a picture of like the the N sixty four cartridge of them. It's kind of funny nice. on the front. Uh, mm. Blood Fresh Supply, which is the um, modern version of Blood, with yeah, yeah. like the modern source port and everything. Really cool stuff. Uh, Blood is a really fun game, uh, built on the same de- engine as Duke Nukem three D, mm-hmm. uh, and it has a like a ton of horror references and all this other stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, that that's like a huge. Uh, they did Strife as well um, when they brought back Strife. They uh they they did the work on that. Um, did they do the work on um the what what's the one where you're Lo Wang? Uh, oh um, yeah, um Shadow Warrior the um, Shadow Warrior because th- there are those there are those two new games too. um but the original one was basically Eastern Duke Nukem but yeah the old Shadow Warrior. Yeah, I don't think they worked on that one, but uh, yeah, that was re-released as well. Yeah, that is still but, uh, available digitally. Yeah, yeah, let me see here. Yeah, they worked on a, a and also a port of Nam, which is also a lesser known, um, like uh, Duke Nukem 3D engine title. Uh, what's what's a, the build engine? Isn't that what that's called? The build engine. That sounds right. Okay, uh, and. Let me see what else have they put out. They so this this was a big thing. Uh, they recently put out Doom sixty four on PC, and this is the first time that it was officially on PC. They actually got the guy who was working on the like the fan PC port. The yeah, Absolution that's what I was talking about. One. This is this is like the one time that I can think of that Night Dive took a game that was not on PC and brought it to PC, except it was still already brought to PC, just unofficially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they got the guy who was doing all the work already, and they were like, hey, you know, let's, yeah, let's that put is this out for cool. real. Yeah. Uh, so so this this version that, that, that Bethesda just released, um, uh, you know, to kind of coincide with uh, Doom Eternal, uh, is even better than that old fan version, which was always already really freaking great to bre- begin with yeah. but they added um they added a whole new section to the game um and uh they they did all kinds of other improvements as well so yeah, it's, i would it's love really, to play that really because good. i don't think i've played doom 64 since like i used to have it on the 64 <laughs> uh, you can pick it up for five bucks uh, which yeah, is really I'm good probably gonna do that that sounds amazing yeah, uh, you just need to buy it off of Bethesda's launcher. But um, Okay, I was, was going to really say, well. I didn't know it was available for sale. I thought it was just like a pre-order bonus for Doom Eternal. No, you can, you can buy it uh, piecemeal on Switch or from Bethesda's uh, uh, launcher All for right. five bucks. I'll probably wait till it hits Steam or God because I don't feel like getting a it. new launcher just for this shit. Yeah, I mean, eh, whatever. I don't think you're. I don't think it will, will will get released on anything else. To be honest, yeah, Doom 2016 um, was released on Steam. Yeah, but Bethesda's been pushing their launcher recently, so I don't know. I'll wait a couple of years. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it, it it it's really freaking good. And they also um, uh, so there was be- work being made on a PC port of the Saturn version of Power Slave. Or exhumed oh, in some territories, uh, called Power Slave EX, and that game's really baller. It, 
uh, has like Metroidvania elements, um, and it's really really good. It, it's uh, the the Saturn version is completely unique from the uh, Sony uh, the Sony PlayStation version and the PC version. Like it, it it's unique. Uh, so they they were working on that and uh, Night Dive like snatched them up before they could complete like the project for free. So like if you got the beta. Uh, you got it, but you can't really find it on his like original website anymore. Huh. Uh, you have to do some digging to find it. But uh, uh, they're looking to sell that as like a commercial product, which hmm. more power to them. So like like they keep snatching up people that are doing like these these like fan ports uh, and fan remasterings, which is really awesome. The remastering that they did for um, Strife is unbelievable. Did you ever play that one? No, I haven't. Uh, Strife Veteran Edition. It's like it, you you could hardly tell that it was built on the Doom engine. Like it's mm. it's that good. Like they did such a good job with the front end and all that other stuff. Um, in fact, I, I I wouldn't even play it on like the um, the Doom uh, source port. Uh, it was like Do- FX Doom or whatever, um, or ZX Doom. Uh, what, whatever you play it on. Yeah, right like now. I think it's just Z Doom. Z Doom. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't even play it on that. I would just play it in their straight up modern launcher. Hmm. Um, it's that good. So yeah, they they uh they also put out the Blade Runner. Um, uh, yeah, that's insane. Adventure. Yeah, that's a game that people have kind of wanted, but like they knew they weren't gonna get. It's you know it's a Blade Runner game. It's not some random new IP. But like no, they got it. This is on the short list of games that I was like, I would love this, but it's never going to fucking happen. And then it happened. <laughs> yeah, because um, like bef- before you had to get some yeah. like some downloadable mods to play it because it was made for like Windows NT. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a really um, like anything from like 1997, uh, at, like until like like uh, yeah, early 3D games are kind of scary to get running on modern stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, uh, like old games are good and games after that are good, but like this yeah, one, one five weird year period, period, yeah. Yep. Exactly, exactly, and um, like there's still plenty of stuff during that era that hasn't gotten um, gotten gotten running. But they, I mean, this is this is a game with a license too. Like this is a, um, it's based off of a very famous license off of like one of the best regarded uh, sci-fi movies of all time. Like, uh, like people, people would put this up there with, with like 2001 Space Odyssey as being like one of the best of all time. Yeah. And isn't and, it like a, like a side story that kind of plays into like the canon? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so as, as far as Blade Runner canon goes, there's not much there because there's the book which has its own thing, but the movie doesn't really have an extended universe other than the, you know, the second movie that just came out Yeah. yeah. like only, a, uh, only two years ago at this point. So um, this is, like, the only other, like, major game in its history, unless you want to <laughs> count, uh, Soldier, uh, by Paul W. Oh, Anderson. yeah, 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 <laughs> which apparently does play into it, which is amazing. It just has a, like, a little nod. The to, least to Kurt Russell-y and... Kurt Russell movie. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. He's just so stone cold, like serious and sober all the time. He's like that in in, in uh, Stargate as well. To be fair, Is he? okay, I've oh, only yeah. seen pieces of Stargate. I'm more familiar yeah. with the uh, the TV show SG One. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Which is actually kind of funny. Uh, I'm, I'm completely the opposite. I only know the movie. Um, <laughs> but SG One is pretty great. There are there is so much Stargate media, like yeah, tons of it. Like where did it all come from? But anyway, um, yeah, Blade Runner. Like I've been waiting forever to be able to play this game. So um, uh, of course uh, it's on my backlog. But I, I really want to freaking play this. It, I'm so happy that they were able to like move through all of the uh, wade through all of the you know the legal bullshit. Yeah. There were at, at some point they were trying also to get out. Uh, no one lives forever one and two, but uh, yeah. uh, Warner Interactive gave them a cease and desist. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, that, and they're also putting out the Sin games. <laughs> like wow. remember Sin? S Y N. 
Yeah, no, S I N. It is S I N. Uh, with a capital N. Yeah, capital N. Oh, oh my um, God, I do. <clears throat> Holy shit, I remember that yeah. cover. Huh. Yeah, these 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 games were like um, Dead on Arrival, famously. Like you, yeah. you, this was one of the first games that you needed a patch upon buying it. But like this was at a time in which like people didn't have internet like that. Yeah, so you had <laughs> to like the call the service and they'd send you something. Yeah. I think what was that? What is? I was gonna mention about Sin. I think, um, yeah, there was an anime movie of this. Wait, really? Oh yeah, huh. absolutely. Yeah, in two thousand. Re- recently, um, it, it, yeah. So what what ended up happening was they wanted to remake this game with an episodic, um, like, uh, you know, because episodes were getting really popular because like the Telltale games were, yeah, um, like did well with them. So they they, they wanted to remake Sin with uh, like the Sin episodes. And then, like, only the first episode came out. Uh. <laughs> so the the original version was dead on arrival, and the second one just, like, died in the middle of it. It's just kind of funny. And they released that anime movie. And um, uh, w- when uh, Night Dive announced this on Twitter, that they were going to be doing, like, the new Sin game coming up, uh, the Sin Remastered, um, somebody was like, I'm brushing up on my Sin lore, and, like, posted, like, a picture of the anime uh, DVD. <laughs> And they were like, oh, we, we have to get the team to watch this for deep lore. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. According to Wikipedia, so these guys it's are... only like loosely based on the game anyway. These these guys are really really cool. They they, they make the cool. impossible happen. So I'm 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 just like enamored by them. Uh, of course, they're they're working on a, a complete remake of the original system stock to make the game goddamn playable yeah they're just creating um, <laughs> a new game at this point so that's that's like a first for them i think what how do they how oh do yeah they plan and to I, do... I played the alpha and it was really good how, what, did you say what was that yeah sorry uh how do they plan to do that do, do they did they develop their own engine or they're like using something like unity or unreal i think they i think they were using something unreal. different but then they moved over it Oh, it's unreal now I, I remember there was a switch maybe it was unity then yeah. it's unreal or something but yeah yeah, I think it's on Unreal now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they, they, they switched they, from one thing to another thing. Yeah, most games... They had... Oh, go ahead. Most games nowadays are starting to all be like on the same engines and all. It's just easier to work on. Yeah. Yeah, it went from Unity to Unreal, so okay, that was okay. correct. Um, but yeah, for a long time, they had gone radio silent on this remake. Um, but Everybody it had was turned out about that... this, because it was a big Kickstarter back yeah. project. Yeah, it turns out that they they kind of scrapped it and wanted to rebuild it like really special. Uh, well, I'd also heard that so they well. put some of their like a bunch of the money into like their other projects too, and it's like that's not what we paid yeah, for. But apparently, not, yeah. but apparently, they're they 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 brought it back, which everyone was like wiping sweat off their brow, like whew. Yeah, so they're they're working on that. So I I'm super psyched. So th- that that's what's on the horizon for this the studio. But they they rock and roll. I mean they yeah. they are really really doing doing awesome work for the PC gaming community. I think pretty much all of my uh, games that I wanted to see um, brought from this time period, pretty much all the really big yeah, ones are playable now. And and buy uh, and you can buy them. So, really cool. Well, um, uh, do you guys have anything else that you want to um just uh, enumerate on, or or can we do fan stuff? I'll get the fan stuff in a moment. One thing I'll say, I also want to make it to um to Steam Gog whatever is the af- the aforementioned stuff I had uh, brought up, like like the the Mad Dog McCree stuff. Like bring back uh, Crime Patrol. I want to play Crime Patrol. Wait, is that that is that the space one? No, it's just when you're a cop. Oh, okay. But I also want this. Yeah, you know what? Bring the space one. Do it. <laughs> just, just bring yeah, all of them. Yeah, that's the one where they're wearing wearing like lacrosse pads and shit. Um... Oh my god, that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> yeah, that... make it happen. Make it happen. Yeah, that that one was on 3DO. What was what was that called? Space. Uh, I, I, I know what, what you called. mean, but I don't remember. It's like space lasers. That that's, <laughs> that like sounds that. right. That sounds right. Yeah, that's some some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like who cares? It's it's fun schlock. 
I need, I need to look this up. Yeah, Space. I'm looking it up right now if I can. <laughs> I typed Mad Dog McCree. I'm seeing if I can find like the other games. That'd be amazing. Oh, that's right. These guys were called like Digital Le- Digital Leisure. They were the first in the ser- Mad Dog McCree was first Space in the series. Space Pirates. Yeah, it, it was. You know what it was? It was the first Mad Dog McCree was among a series called American Laser Games oh, because yeah. they were on Laserdisc. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it was space space laser uh, or space pirates. Here, look at this Facafon. I want. I'm gonna put this in our in our chat. Look at this. Look at this photo. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that beautiful. that is beautiful. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah let's, it's let's like a lacrosse helmet. Let's play some space pirates. It looks I like a do it. It looks like a really shady uh, Kano from. Uh, from <laughs> you know uh, what? Euro it does. Combat. It does. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he's Australian. <laughs> I can only hope. Uh, yeah. And if he's not, then he'll change the canon and make it that way. <laughs> well, as for me... Yeah, this is... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go for it. I'm sorry. As for me, like, uh, Sin Meier's Pirate's Gold, uh, I think me and my friend had the Sega Genesis version, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was really fun. I played that back in the day. And nowadays, I... One of the very interesting mechanics they had is, like, when you... Like, the more you play, you can increase, like, the difficulty... And the way they handle that is they make your character older, so he'd just be like, he wouldn't be as young, so he, he wouldn't be as fast when he was fighting with his sword and everything. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it was a pretty cool way of doing it, and because the game eventually ends with you like retiring from piratry, basically. Sure, sure. So it was a pretty pretty interesting way to do it. That's clever. Yeah, I I like the 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 like remake or reimagining that he did later on, like in, around in the Xbox era. Um, that was a really good game too. Did you ever play that one? That one, no. Yeah, yeah, it was really good, really good. Uh, well, uh, I think we should move on to fan stuff. Without Why, any sure, ado. let's do it. So we we have a few comments here. <clears throat> so, School Filmer says uh, King's Bounty Two looks fun. And reminds me of Heroes of Might and Magic. I'm not much of a strategic, tactical player, but I did quite enjoy the third game in that series, as well as its expansions. I enjoyed Xenoblade Chronicles on new 3DS, even with the frame rate drops. Can't wait for the Switch version. I need to complete Xenoblade 2, get the DLC, and complete that as well. And Nino Kuni. Enjoyed that so far. It's quite tidy. Uh, Living mm-hmm. Corpse is uh, referring to you know the Godzilla game I had mentioned, like in you know the the PS2 GameCube brawlers were pretty cool but then they got that crappy ps4 game (laughs) and um living corpse says oh there's worse than the ps4 game there's a monster verse game in stunning 4k for the first time godzilla and king kong are in a game together they never look more amazing it's called monster bet it's a stupid slot machine game hybrid for casinos (laughs) you can bet they made a monster misstep since the target audience for either is not old enough to gamble and I'm hearing the next game is going to be a mobile phone game. Everyone wants another fighting game, but I personally want an adventure game. Closest we got to that is Super Godzilla, you know, the SNES game, oh, yeah. kind of. Mm. Uh, I don't count the PS4 game as it's more like a simulator than an actual game. Hopefully with things like SSD, we can have such a game with awesome, dynamic, destructible environments. Godzilla isn't just about fighting other monsters. It's also about destroying the army and cities. Raise that property damage. It's like yeah. a Yakuza game, only bigger. <laughs> I, I like King uh, King of the Monsters, uh, the 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 Neo Geo game. Those games mm. are great. And then finally, Dracologist is explaining Mechanicus. Uh, it's an XCOM-like turn-based tactic game where the Adeptus Mechanicus does their usual Necron tomb pilfering. Fair enough. <laughs> so finally, our question. This question is beautiful in simplicity. Uh, Insane Buffoon asks, "Do you consider yourselves lucky? Well, do you, punks?" <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many shots did you fire? Yeah, my, with my, with all the excitement, I lost count. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, I I would say absolutely yes. Oh yeah, um, me too. Like my my whole family is able to do their their jobs remotely right now, so we can you know still get paid. We just have to tweak how we do things a bit. Uh, like I don't have family drama or anything like that. Like, oh no, I gotta see this relative. Like, like, like I don't have those nightmarish Thanksgiving family fights. You know that, uh, that doesn't yeah. happen. Mm. Um, 
you know, like, like I went to a, like a good school. I had to move around a bunch as a kid growing up. When we got settled in, things generally went pretty smoothly from there. Like, I, I can't really complain. Like, I got the, I got these bunch of video games I'm playing. Just like, it was like a selfish, you know, pleasure thing. But like, you know, like, I don't have any like dire things going on. So like, yeah, I would say it's absolutely lucky. Um, I would absolutely uh, say it, but I, I, I kind of don't like to jinx it either. Um, I know, I know. I, I, <laughs> I, I have a view of luck as like um the uh the Discworld version of luck. Um, like you, you can't ask for it. Um, because oh. you won't receive it. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, well, that, that's 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 the real version of luck, though. If you ask for luck and you get it, then it isn't luck, is it? Like, you yeah. pay for a favor. <laughs> Yeah, it was like um, luck is a like a really strange uh, personification in uh, in in Discworld. Um, there was a um, like a cult that tried to worship luck, but then like uh, their candle fell over and the entire building burned down when they were trying to worship her. That's amazing. Um, like it is, it's just amazing. Uh, but like, I, I kind of view it like that. It's like I I I I I acknowledge my luck, but I never count on it. It's just yeah. like one of those things. Well, well again, if um, you can count on it, then it isn't luck. It's a it's a, a fixed value. Yeah, exactly. Um, I I mean, I I have my health. I I have a, a great family. I have the best fiance in the world. Um, and I I was just able to buy a house, and I can work from home. I I um I I can't ask for anything more, even during a a tough time. Um, and I, I I'm I I realize my privilege um nature in this um and i'm very thankful that um you know i'm not having uh what could be a a much harder life at the moment absolutely it's pretty much the same Um, for me honestly and i also have great friends (gasps) like who oh go for it who are your great friends um you don't know them they live in canada um i got you (laughs) what But uh, yeah, go ahead, Pacapon. Well, also yes. To reiterate it, I feel the same as you do, honestly. Like, just the the, the simple things in life. Like, I have a good family, I have my health, and uh, even though I've been chasing a career in video games for seven years now, and it's it keeps eluding me, um, I'm so close now. I'm so close, I can taste it. You know, <laughs> I'm finally it's getting there. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, it, it, luck is relative because yeah things happen in your life and you can say oh well, i was really unlucky but it's like yeah but you got a roof you got food you never had any food problem in your life you never yeah. had real money problem in your life every time you go home you're safe uh you can walk well, not, not not to mention like sorry go ahead i'm, I'm being rude go ahead go ahead uh now i was just gonna say also if you point out specific things and say that was lucky that was unlucky like, I, I mean, I know you're mentioning your, your basic condition, like, you know, have a roof over your head, but, like, what about every other thing that happens to you in your life, you know? It, it's like if you look at the clock and you notice it's, like, 2.22, you're like, oh, wow, that's a coincidence. <laughs> and, like, over over the next few days, you might just notice that time, and you're like, why does this keep happening? Have, do any of you have anything like this? Whereas, in actuality, you're probably seeing a bunch of other times that don't register in your head a bunch of times as well. It's just, this is what you're focusing on because it means something in your brain. Yeah, I know what you you, mean. So, like, so, yeah, you can't just go, like, these three good things happened to me, that means I'm lucky. Or these three bad things happened to me, unlucky for sure. It's like, who knows how many things are going on at any given time, Yeah. So, yeah, I, I generally consider myself lucky, even though, like... I don't know, my current situation isn't great, and it hasn't been for years, but I can't really complain because, like, despite all of that, like, despite not having a job for, like, a few years and everything, I still have a lot of great friends, I have a lot of projects going on, I have things happening in my life. Mm-hmm. I guess my own, my real issue is and, like, has been for a while that I don't have my, like, monetary independence, basically. Yeah, for for me, it's largely the same, like... I, like, I have enough to, like, buy frivolities, but, like, going full-on in a house is outside my range. Yeah. Um, 
uh, I, I'm I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, yeah. I just was in a situation in which I could uh, I was able to uh, you know make that happen on my end. Um, it it's just one of those things. I, I just you know didn't count on it, but it worked really hard and it worked out right for me. It's mm-hmm. it was a combination. It's not just it's not just luck either. It's planning and sure and and being smart about certain things and also having good fortune good fortune is definitely a part of it i mean if you have if you do if you do all the right things sometimes you just you still have bad things happen to yeah you sometimes it's just one of those things um but uh i i acknowledge you know um the the good things that have happened to me in my life and i'm very thankful um so and i'm glad to be you know doing the show almost 200 episodes in um uh, yeah, getting, never missing yeah. a week uh, with with uh, a bunch of really great great people. I, I love doing this with you guys. I love having our uh, our frequent commenters and uh, frequent listeners as well. Absolutely, I, yeah, you know, yeah. It's just one of those things. Um, I I am thrilled that you know for uh, almost two hundred weeks now. You've wanted to come back and and listen, uh, take time specifically out of your week to listen to me twice a week. Yeah, uh, why? You know, me and my what's wrong my with friends. you? Yeah, so. I was gonna say it's hard, <laughs> it's hard enough for me doing both of the podcasts in a row, listening to you once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention those times that you call me and I don't really want to call you back. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say the opposite. I actually rarely make outgoing calls. Usually, you call me and I'm like not near my phone, and I'm like, oh. Whoops. Oh. Maybe maybe I should call him back. <laughs> the one who doesn't want to call back is me. No, for for real though, like if I'm not at work or something, I'm probably not near my phone, so I actually do miss a bunch of calls. I feel bad about that. <laughs> <sighs> but I was going to plan the uh the I was going to uh, go to Hachi Station, or Tashi Station. <laughs> I was going to plan powers. the Korkun uh, bicentennial. Uh, <laughs> Bicentennial. Bicentennial. <laughs> Actually, you know what? <laughs> Thinking of lucky, how about we push that question a little further? How about in video games? Do you feel lucky in video games? Because that's a whole different thing. Um... Well, no, I, it's not really luck. I just hold up B and um, I get that Pokemon no matter what. I, I just keep reloading until I get the drop <laughs> I want. Well, let's see here. Let's say I'm talking about same uh, schemes, safe scumming. Uh, yeah, safe scumming. Scum. I mean, create your own I mean, luck. I, I've gotten lucky. I, I have gotten lucky in video games, but like, I wouldn't say that I'm just generally lucky or unlucky in them. I know some of my friends are ridiculous lucky when it comes to video games. Like one of my friends, he plays those gotcha games. And, you know, you get some okay. events, and it's like, oh, you can get this character. It's like a 0.01% chance to get yep, him. Yep. And, like, on the second draw, nice. it's like, hey, there it is. So, That's freaking right. Yeah. Wow. That's great. When it comes to me, it's That's weird really because good. I'm usually unlucky, but I'm lucky in my luck, which sounds weird. But let's say, like, I want to get a certain character, right? I played a Grand Blue for three years. Sure. And uh, I never quite got what I wanted. Like I, I kept getting characters. I was like, "Yeah, it's cool, but it's not it's not good for my team or whatever." And mm-hmm. eventually, those characters that weren't really good, there was an update, and every single one of them became excellent. And I had all of them. Nice. So I was like, "Huh?" Suddenly, my team. Well, there you go. Kicks ass, and I. It's like it's like a second layer of luck. Yeah, exactly. I guess <laughs> I guess good things happen to those who wait, or uh, something like that. What, what's it? Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, when it comes to video games, it's when it comes to my luck. Usually, I create my own luck because I can save and load. But uh, well, yeah, there, there you, go. you go. There you go. In situations where I can't <laughs> do that, I'm usually unlucky and then become lucky in my unluckiness. It's weird. Gotcha. Gotcha. The best of a worst situation. Yeah. The best of a bad situation, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like usually, when I think of luck in video games, it's like it's drops or something, because uh, I don't really have too much to talk about in regard to like other situations because a lot of what happens in games is like to a degree predetermined yeah so it's usually like percentage drops so like i I don't know like i'll keep reloading until i get what i want or like in the souls games i'll leave the area come back try again you know that kind of thing yeah yeah hmm 
Well, I I think we uh we went over everything pretty pretty well with that one. I I think you did a great job of extending that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, well one. done. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, we will have to move on uh and uh finish up the show here without any further ado. Thank uh and that is the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions. Please keep us supplied with awesome topics of our own by submitting uh questions of your own on the YouTube and SoundCloud pages while there. Please give us thumbs up, likes and five star ratings on iTunes. Helps promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement that helps keep the the show going you can also catch us on tuesdays on our sister podcast reactive consciousness the in-depth look at this week in our lives finally you can friend me as vise the bold on anything that you can think of. <laughs> and you could follow me on my youtube channel lotus prince you can hit me up on twitter at at lotus prince and finally if you are interested in seeing my videos early getting in on exclusive live streams selecting upcoming games for me to let's play or get involved in discussions with me and other patrons on discord then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprints. Oh yeah, and the discussions on the Discord are very varied. It's not just like horror games, it's pretty much anything you can think of. That is true, yeah. I, I, I can do better than horror games, even though I'm playing like three of those in a row. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and as for me, uh, you can find me on YouTube as Facafun, on Twitter as Lou Facafun, that's L-O-U-P, and I also draw a webcomic called Kajula Chan, and you can find that either on... Uh, the website or on webtoon hell yeah all right guys uh we will catch everybody on tuesday we'll see you then until next time everyone see you everybody bye-bye